Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've got about 15 minutes to kind of tell you a very long story, so I'm going to really condense it down. Uh, essentially, Topaz is a very young company, so we're about five years in existence, but it actually, its history goes way back in terms of it comes from the old Shell and Stalog businesses, where two organizations pretty much came together three years ago with different platforms, different technologies, and different ways of doing business, right? So what we were trying to do is unify that company with under one platform and one technology. And I suppose it started with, with our Topaz rebranding. So at that stage, we were operating on different platforms in terms of IT. We moved to SAP last year. And more importantly, I suppose, we took some of the legacy stuff from Stato. Stato actually were using SharePoint uh, about five years ago. Uh, but they were only using it for corporate scorecards. And it really wasn't going down to the business and getting out to where we wanted to be, where it was site level. And if I look at how big our business is, and the division I look after is our retail side, we actually have a very, very big market share with almost, you know, 1,600 employees, 200 stations, 20 million transactions. And we have a million customers coming in our stores every day, or every week, which is a lot of people coming through. And we have a lot of employees to engage in terms of, because that is our sales force. And you can't engage those people unless you have information that makes sense to them information that they can understand and information that can drive their performance. And really, I suppose, with, with that in mind, we, we decided to move forward with the SharePoint system, using BI as a tool to drill right down through the organization and try and change behaviors with our employees at the front line. And I'm going to try and show you how we do that, or how we've tried to do that for the last year or two. We have a large commercial business as well, which we haven't actually deployed the system yet. And it's an area where I think we will go next when we prove it on the retail side, because effectively we touch probably every household in the country at some stage. And, and really, it's all hooked together with a vision. And we're, we've got a, a bit of a continuous improvement culture within our organization where we're trying to do things a little bit better every time. So the, the idea of like 1% better 100 times, we do 100% better. And we're trying to engage our employees and our, and our managers to kind of think forward thinking all the time and using the information they have to do what they're doing today just that little bit better. Okay, from a, from a retail perspective, what I've, what I've, we've called it a thing called lean retail. And lean retail isn't about cutting costs, it's actually helping our employees work a bit smarter by giving them information, sales information, cost information, efficiency information to help them drive some waste out of the system. And waste being waste in terms of things that they're doing today that don't add value or waste in terms of things that we're actually just burning up in terms of resources. And, uh, it, it's, and it's framed around the whole idea of lean retail, but it really wouldn't work without the technology and the business information to help us communicate that right down. And that's, that's the fundamental glue that kind of puts this whole concept of lean retail together for our organization. So basically what we're doing is trying to eliminate the waste, management by exception, so that's taking the information and, and showing it in red when it's wrong, essentially, and showing it in green when it's right, and then you don't need to worry about that. So it's taking the bits that we need to fix and identify them for the lowest common denominator. And that kind of gives that continuous improvement because we're always fixing the problems or always dealing with the weaknesses or gaps. Some of the things that might make sense from a retail perspective, and there's any retail people here, you know, a lot of overproduction, waiting, transportation, bad management of inventory extra processing or non-utilized talent. So we've actually mapped all that out <coughs> right down to the lowest common denominator. And we put it up in what we call 12 lean tools, right? Now, a lot of these tools require information technology to actually communicate. For example, we have a communications board where we put all the KPIs up. So they, they'll appear on my dashboard in the office, right? So I've got a very high level view of it. The area managers have a very high level view, drill down, but we've got got it right down to store level. So you walk into one of our stores, into the back office area, you'll see a communications board, and we're trying to communicate the KPIs that are relevant to the store, to the employees, so that they can actually change their behavior to try and improve our business. And you know, we do that by taking the communication board, bringing them through five minute briefings every change shift, and then ultimately trying them to upsell. So it's all about selling more for frontline employees. In terms of process management, we're, we're using it then to help us manage inventory. So ma min-max ordering, identifying out of stocks, driving that uh, stock availability, which is crucial for a retail business. Having routines that help you with that, then managing the warehouse in terms of maximizing our inventory in the store to make sure we get the right products at the right time, making sure we're not carrying excess stock, and driving waste out of the system. 
It then also helps us with the planning phase because we have the information which allows us to produce what we need, plan when we need it, and then ultimately manage the labour around that because our business is, is very heavy on labour. You know, essentially, probably 40% of our gross profit goes in labour. And the more efficient we can become, the more profit we make as a company. So there's a whole lot of tools that we're using that really rely heavily on BI, rely heavily on SharePoint for us to help bring that information down from the very top where I have a very high level of understanding of the business to a very low understanding for the employees where they know what they need to do to help us make more money. That's pretty much what it looks like in terms of some of the KPIs. I won't dwell too much on it. That's what it looks like in reality. So we've got a lot of really easy to understand communication pieces where it's smiley face if it's right, it's a sad face if it's not right. Okay, so the, the information is generated automatically Every store is ranked, so you're either one or number 109. So that creates competitiveness within the store groups. You could be ranked within your peer group, so we, we, we slice and dice information in different ways. And the whole idea there is that we're trying to drive a bit of competition and continuous improvement. And there's a whole load of things that we're doing. We actually change this board probably every six to 12 months when we fix certain KPIs, or they're, they're actually all green and they're green for a period of time. Let's go and work on the red ones where we need to improve and try and drive that behavioural change right down through the org. We feed the results back and really what we do is we try and take the results and we reward the star performance. So this guy here, manager of a store in Dublin Port, I brought him over to Atlanta for a week, for a week's holidays and we had a great time. And everyone wants to be him next year because... <laughs> the wife with you? No, 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 it was a boy's, it was a boy's week. But the whole idea there was... <laughs> I was, I was his, I was his well, staff member, I looked after him for the week because he was driving the continuous improvement of our business. But he was using the tools and when I brought a couple of guys in to have opened his store down in Dublin Port last week, they were amazed to see that number one, it was being used, right? And number two, all the staff knew all the KPIs. So when you go and check, did somebody know what their sales results were for them, for their individual shift? Did they know what their promotions participation was? Did they know what their target was? And actually, in fact, we had managed, or he had managed to deliver our concept right down to the lowest. And, and the site actually is probably, uh, it's probably one of the, it actually is the busiest site in the country, but it's probably one of the most profitable sites in the country as a result of using the information to give the results. Okay, so just in summary, right, uh, for us, it's all about having KPIs, but not just at a very high level. So we're bringing them right down through the organization. And, and the SharePoint and BI helps us do that. It measures everything at customer's value. So we're, it's not just about measuring sales or margins. It's actually customer satisfaction, product availability, and things that we know drive the business in terms of that will deliver a, a, a p and for us. We publish the results at all levels, so it's very important. We actually have an open communication style where I want the individual store to know what their profitability is. And they won't know what the overall company profitability is because they have certain restrictions as you would, but I know what it is. The area manager knows what their area is, and the store knows what their, what their store is. And then that really helps us to, to, to drive quickly and respond quickly to exceptions, right? And what we do is we then integrate those KPIs into the performance. So you will probably get a monthly performance review as an employee. You will definitely get a quarterly appraisal, and your KPIs will be plugged into your file. So we take it that little bit step further in terms of we're embedding it in the organization in terms of a real performance culture. And we do deal with poor performance. I mean, if you're in the bottom 10%, you're likely to lose your job within our organization within a 6 to 12 month period, which ultimately is what people at the top want because they want to be rewarded if you're doing a good job and they want to see the poor performance dealt with. And information does that for you, particularly if it's very transparent and open and consistent. And that's one of the things I see if you slide through here. People actually like that. If you're in the bottom 10%, you've got to bring someone to Atlanta. No. <laughs> back at a car wash <laughs> it usually says we haven't fired them to be honest with you because they're, they're, the career's not for them obviously they need to find something else to do with their time because they're not driving our business so but it does help us as a business unit so I mean what, what I would say that BI for us we measure things daily weekly monthly it's very efficient I mean you know the data is available quickly you can access it you can drill in if, if there's maybe a couple of super users who can actually produce their own reports and sites so they can actually get behind what's driving a bad number because it's easy to access. 
the communication it's down to the real lowest level and the reward I wouldn't underestimate the reward I mean sometimes when you're publishing a table of 1 to 109 the fact that you're number one is rewarding itself because you're recognizing good performance for somebody and people are very proud to be in the the top one, two, three, and you know, the guy in Dublin Port, by the way, pretty much would be in the top five across all the KPIs we measure. May not be number one in everything, but he'd be in the top five, and he knows what, what actually drives his, his, his business. And then the elite reward. So I suppose, in summary, for me, uh, it's about a culture change in the business for us, and using an IT and technology to accelerate that for us. And, and I don't know if anybody's read the book, uh, Jim Collins, Good to Great, it's one of the things I got out of that book was you may be very good at something, but you need to use technology to help you accelerate and continue to accelerate ahead of your competition. Because we all know it's not that easy out there. Okay. Thank you. That's